David joins me live in the studio today. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Felix. Yeah, of course, anytime. So, David, um, you're, you're expecting a lot of questions from left field, right? Left field. How about this one? You said in your bio that drumming is built upon the foundation of uh, your knowledge of the music history, um, the fundamental elements, and how they work together. Right. Do you feel as though a lot of players don't have the same respect for those fundamentals as they used to? Yeah, I think um, when it comes to specifically jazz and the tradition of jazz, um, a lot of kids these days, and I say kids very loosely, they don't really respect the uh, the tradition and also um, the knowledge that you need to have uh, to do it and also foundational elements of music. I think it's a lot of music today is chop-based and it's based on... Uh, expressions of skill as opposed to the emotive aspect and um i think that's a key fundamental thing that's missing right and what do you think that is why do you think that uh players are trying to express their their they're trying to show off their chops well, right? technical ability one main reason well i mean there are many but i think one main reason with the advancement of technology you know you can basically put up a clip in like 10 seconds right right and in this day and age everything is instant and it's not just instant but it's instant and really good so you have 10 seconds to wow somebody so what do you do you pull out the best things that you have you know it's it's like you and i have in this conversation here and i just pull out like all the best words in the english language <laughs> that nobody can understand yeah it's super verbose and it's like okay that sounded really good but what did you actually say what right. does it really mean so I think a lot of the meaning has um, come out from music right now. But, I mean, that's just my perspective. I think that is a key element that we kind of need to, like, refocus on. How do, we, how do we refocus? How do we get back to those roots? Man, it's interesting. I, I, I go to the movies a lot, right? And, uh, I, I mean, I'm like, I'm a Netflix freak. Like, I'm on Netflix all the time. And <clears throat> when I'm listening to these things... I find myself critiquing the music or critiquing scenes as opposed to just enjoying what's happening. So I think we need to come back to the place of just like listening to music just for listening to music right. without having to, oh my God, I was like a flat five, shot my flat, oh my God, you hear that chop? Is like, I think a lot of musicians today are so focused on um, the elements of music as opposed to what the message is so i think if we get back to that place of not being so critical about what we put out and just feel right you know feeling and emotion needs to come back i think that's a huge huge thing yeah i, I totally agree just yeah. like listening to the music and feeling and enjoying this for what it is yeah not because oh cool chord progression here that's it and i think if we get back to that place a lot of the music that we create wouldn't not necessarily be that technical no i'm not a musical guru and i'm not trying <laughs> to be like you know uh, bringing some sort of a revolution to, to music i'm not trying to do that i'm just saying <laughs> that i think we should take a step back sometimes and figure out why am i playing this why am i doing this why am i playing this chord here why am i playing this lick is it because i want to get praised or is it because i want the music to really speak right yeah do you think that emphasis on technical ability has been imposed by uh, music school? 
and all these musicians congregating and then you learn from professors and they're telling you uh and they're telling you these chord progression this chord right. progression is so cool well i mean it's it's an interesting thing here's what i would say i think going to school is great because the environment is cool you have your peers um i think it's pretty dangerous if we go to school and we have sessions where students are I don't want to say forced, but coerced to evaluate stuff. So in other words, when you're a student, you find that most of the things you do on a daily basis is to critique and criticize, which is fine because it develops a sense of a standard. But when that's super regular and you don't just play for plain sake or you don't just enjoy music for enjoying music's sake, then what you find is you create a person or a musician who is critically minded and or critique minded I should say. So they hear something and instead of just enjoying it for enjoying its sake, you just oh I didn't like this chord in bar fifteen. It's like <laughs> <laughs> who cares? <laughs> you know? Yeah. The hi-hat was off on a sixteenth note. It like that I mean there's a time and place for analysis, but I think um it, when it comes to school we need to kinda like dial back a bit and just enjoy music for enjoying music's sake you know yeah but it's also you said that uh students are critiquing yeah but teachers are always critiquing so do you think they they should pull back a little bit or change the way that they're critiquing the music well i think it's based on on a city on every situation um i do think that more listening and enjoyment should be the focus rather than critique because i mean you wouldn't want somebody to come in here and be like hey felix um you know you shouldn't have asked that question or you shouldn't have used that verb that verb you know it's like <laughs> we're having a conversation and the conversation will go where it will go um, and there's a time like i said for analysis and for post-mortems but if you only focus on that then it's going to be pretty challenging for growth but it should be, you think that it should be dialed back a little bit. A little bit. Right. That's my opinion. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So in, in your second year, uh, by your second year, you said that you you became one of the top drummers at Humber. How do you know that you're all at the top of the food chain? Well, I mean, <laughs> there there's a thin line between ego and confidence. And I know what I bring to the table. I bring a lot of expertise. Um... And I also have my peers who see me in a particular way and members of faculty. And it's not really to like toot my own horn or to be like, you know, I'm like one of the best. <laughs> but I value hard work. I've worked really, really hard over the years. And um, I've seen where I've been placed in situations to mentor people, you know. And um, it's been cool. It's been a good ride. How does it feel to have to work so hard over the years and to have all that come to fruition? feels good what does it mean to you it means a lot um i think we as human beings uh we we are destination oriented you know and i'm definitely one of those people i i, I and i don't just enjoy the destination but also the journey and i've learned a lot of things along the way and i've you know it's not just i've become a better musician but i've become a better person you know I've, i'm a dad so i've learned how to you know deal with people and also, even my daughter teaches me that, you know. So it's not just um, I've 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 come and I've learned all these chords and all these skills and whatever. I I've learned how to compartmentalize my life and to make each section of it memorable and valuable. Right. Yeah. Your daughter does not live with you, right? No, now. she lives in Trinidad. So tell me, tell me about your your upbringing. Right. So um, I started playing steel pan uh, when I was five. Uh, my my family's super musical, so you know we would get together on like Saturdays, and my dad would play guitar, and we just literally sit around and sing for hours and hours. Um, and so from there, I went to guitar and then to to drums, and then now it's all bass, man. Like, and so what's your what's your home your home country? What is it like? Really hot. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super. I just came back from Trinidad about a week ago. Right. I'm a little darker. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's, it's really cool. Um, the musical the music industry is uh is booming. Um, it's growing. It's uh, it's a place that I've learned a lot, and I really value all the mentors that I've had over the years who've who've really, 
shaped me and allowed for me to expand when I got to Canada. Because if I didn't learn all those lessons before, I wouldn't have been able to to really grow. How does the music factor into the culture there differently than here in Toronto? Well, um, I wouldn't say it's that different. And here's why. <clears throat> Even though I think North America is more uh, improvised music oriented, or I would say jazz or swing oriented, um, I think if you, my observation is that if you want to make it really good as a musician here, it's good to have a niche. But the more versatile you are, obviously, the more bread you'll have and the more opportunities. And it's the same thing back home. Soca music is more or less the staple in our country, but you have to be a jack of all trades, you know? Right. You have to be able to play, like, every style of music. So I think that comparison is more or less the same in Trinidad and Canada. Like, you have to be a jack of all trades, at least uh, when it comes to playing drums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How is your life? How is your lifestyle different? Um, well, I mean, ever since moving here, I'm a student here, so I always have to remind myself that um, I'm still in student mode and I'm shaping my life to basically get what I need to get and uh, move forward and and learn more and and basically um, be a beacon to people who are back home who are looking to us. And when I mean us, people who have left Trinidad and show them that, hey, you can you can do this, too. You know, right? Yeah, are people more are musicians more confident about making it here in Toronto than they are in Trinidad? I think so because there are more opportunities. You know, we, we you can you can Trinidad is really small, so by small I mean there are a few bands who really make it and are on the circuit. But if you get into those those sectors, you're really good. So like the corporate world is really big in Trinidad. Um, once you get into that, you're really good. I think here it's much harder to get into those circles, um, but there's like more opportunities. So you could decide you want to go into theater, you want to do jazz, you want to do rock. I think here you have more market share and more niche markets that you can get into. With Trinidad, it's more or less one main thing, mm. you know. So it's 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 pretty tricky. Speaking of corporate. Uh, corporate gigs, yeah. getting into that corporate world. Do you feel as though musicians here are are more respected, or are they more respected there and back in Trinidad? Um, there's a there's a quote that I know. Right, it says a, a prophet is without honor in his own home. So, I will look at people who are here and be like, "Wow," but somebody who was born here might look at these same people and be like, "Oh, okay." So it's the same thing back home. Um, I think the value for music, for musicians and musician, musicianship is pretty high. But if you're, if you're a musician there, the respect that you have for somebody who is within your own uh, f- environment may be a little less than somebody who is like in a different one. And I think it, it all boils down to um, the differences. We kind of respect differences more than similarities. Um, and uh yeah back there well everywhere everywhere i think i right. think you know when people hear me speak you know they're like oh you know from here so they might want me want to hear what i have to say even if i see nothing because it's an accent right it's like oh like, let me hear this right S- say butter <laughs> like butter <laughs> like say that again you know so but it, but if somebody from canada says but it's like okay i don't really care you know so yeah. so i think there's a little more value placed on on differences, yeah. Do you exploit that? <laughs> exploit is probably the wrong <laughs> word, but I think, um, musically speaking, I bring a different thing to the table. So, do I exploit it? Yeah, I would say so, um, because that's what I do. I'm I am in competition with because I'm a business and. I have competitors and we're basically providing the same service and goods and services to the same market. So I, I don't think it's like um, I'm angry with anybody or like we're in a war, but it's, it is competitive, you know? And so I have to bring something different to the table um, to uh, any any other drummer that exists or any other musician. What do you bring to the table that's different? My Caribbean heritage. Mm. That's... That's really, really uh, a strong point of reference for me. 
as a musician. Everything I, I do kind of like shifts to that. How has that influenced your, your playing? Well, it's influenced my playing and my writing. For example, um, I studied in, in Cuba for a bit. Um, so that's heavily, heavily influenced how I see music. Um, I'm, a, I'm really into Brazilian music. Um, in fact, I'm really into music from the Caribbean, which is like heavily syncopated. You know, we treat harmony a different way. We treat rhythm a different way. And so uh, it, it kind of like influences how I perceive sound and perceive music in general. Hmm. Yeah. What's different about the way that you that you perceive the sound than say someone that grew up with a different kind of like a Canadian? Well, from my, I, I can speak for for my peers at Humber. Um, Humber is a place where jazz is really really respected, and so the elements of music that pertain to jazz may not be the same that would, may not be the same as like let's say music from Trinidad, you know, or music from Brazil, where it's like very, very syncopated, you know, and uh, it's more dance-oriented, dance-based. Uh, North American music is not specifically dance-based, you know, and it's not necessarily rooted in function. So like back home, you know, we have specific rhythms for specific festivals because, I mean, our culture is like really really huge on dance music in fact every year we have something called carnival right and so everybody looks forward to that aspect of music every year and it's it it influences how we eat you know how we how we interact with each other it's always about music it's always about party and vibes and we have a word called fet and um it's just not necessarily the same in north america is there a greater sense of community in Trinidad? I think so. I think so. Um, we're a very uh, close-knit people, and we, we really celebrate with each other. And mm. mu music is a, a very huge part of, of our culture. And I think it's not just Trinidad, but like the Caribbean. talk about this this facebook post that you made mm -hmm. in december okay which <laughs> <laughs> which one <laughs> december 15th um, no, no, no there's a, okay there's a really really good one i, I think it was a day after christmas uh -huh. i was just scrolling down my news feed and uh you made this long list of things <laughs> that should be left in 2016 <laughs> all right yeah so i pulled i pulled some of the highlights <laughs> <laughs> hey, you put it you put it out there, man. 
<laughs> okay, okay. One of the first ones is posting a vid, but you're constantly looking at yourself <laughs> in the camera. So yeah, man. You got to cool it now. <laughs> you got to press record and look away now. I think so, man. Like, you think so? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. That's like, you know, I know you have a camera there, right? But I'm like, yeah, so Felix, what I think is... um. That doesn't make sense. Like, You're not talking to me. I'm not talking to you. So, right. like, I just believe um, you you, you want to do something, you want to show off your skills. Fine. Okay. Press record. And just do what you have to do. That's just my vibe. Do you think that that has to do with people being too too narcissistic, too much too much me, me, me? Yeah, me? I think so. It's like you're already putting up the video. You're already doing that. So, chill. Mm. Chill. It's fine. Like, we know what you look like. You know what you look like. You don't need to check. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what about this one? Writing open-ended statements on Facebook, and when people ask <laughs> out of concern, you remain silent or say you don't want to talk about it. Yeah, um, I really had a bad day. I wish things could be different. Really? What happened? No, I don't want to talk about it. I don't it. want to talk about it. Like, <laughs> Does what? that happen enough? Oh, it happens. It happens. It happens enough to warrant me putting that up, you know? I have a rule. It's like a rule of three. I don't, I don't just observe something and then comment on it one time. It has to happen like more than three times, and this has happened like at least a hundred times. So you make a mental note of it after three. Yeah, after three. Right. Yeah. What about getting complimented, especially online, and responding with "Nah, I'm, I'm no good. <laughs> nah, I'm trash." <laughs> or this one. I love this one. Nah, it's all God. <laughs> Or even it's all you, exactly. <laughs> or like not not me, it's you. You're, you're killing, not me. <laughs> I don't I don't get it, man. Like if you did something good and somebody complimented you, it's fine to say thank you, you know. Yeah, and move on. I move on because you obviously put in the work to do what you needed to do. It's like somebody calling you for a gig, right? And you go do the gig. The reason why you went to do the gig and you said yes is because you know you could do the gig. So if somebody says to you, man, that was a really good job, I think the default should be thanks. I appreciate it. Not, oh, man, and I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not good, you know. Like, why would you do that? It makes no sense to me. Yeah. You know, so. What do you, where do you think that, that comes from? Our... And I use that word very loosely. Our definition of what modesty or being humble is. Like we think the default version of humility is deflecting. And mm. not, which which is why when you ask earlier on what made me think that, you know, I was one of the top dramas at, at Humble. It's not like just me saying that, but people recognizing what I bring to the table and complimenting me for it and saying that to me. And... Me not saying, oh, no, I'm not good. I can't play drums. I'm not that good. Like, I know I can play drums. I get hired. This is what I do. It's like an Uber driver. And, you know, you reach a destination and you say thank you. And he's like, oh, man, I'm not that good of a driver. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't thank me. He's like, that's what he does. He's an Uber driver. So this is what we do. We play music. And so there are lots of people who can't do what we do. And there are lots of people who do what we do but not at the level that we do it at. So if somebody compliments you, just say thanks. Like you basically goes back to the first thing I said. Why do we do what we do? And it should be to invoke a, 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 an emotion, invoke an experience. And if somebody had that experience, then you should be happy. You should be happy to know that whatever you played, whatever you did, it affected somebody as opposed to somebody just, you know, acknowledging that you're the fastest, like, piano playing the wheel, or, like, you have so much chops. You know, if somebody says, thank you, and I appreciate it, it's cool to just say, all right. Right, I think it's really important to just recognize where you are. It is. And when people recognize that as well, just to accept it. Yeah. And appreciate it. And appreciate it, because a lot of people have been... There, there are hundreds and thousands, probably even millions of other people who don't have that experience. They've been toiling hard and probably nobody said that to them. But you have given, you've been given the opportunity to do something and have somebody come up to you and say, wow, I value what you did. Own it. Right. Own it. Own it. Own it. One more. <laughs> Not getting complimented on your content and <laughs> ranting. <laughs> if it ain't good... Don't post 
And even if it is good, somebody's bound not to dig it. Fact of life. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, again, going back to the old social media thing, you post something and let's say nobody likes it. Or let's say you posted it with the intention that you wanted this one specific person or group of people to like it and they didn't. That's fine. It's cool. It doesn't mean that what you did wasn't up to scratch. And even if it wasn't up to scratch, then don't post it. Like, don't be like, I'm going to post this mediocre stuff and hopefully everybody's just going to be like, wow, that was great. No, like, if it's not good, don't post it. Mm. And if you post it and people don't dig it, that's fine. Because there are a lot of people who don't like church's chicken. There are a lot of people who don't like roti. There are a lot of people who don't like KFC. What so they're gonna close up the stores? Right. No, we have to appreciate differences, and that's what makes us unique as a, as as humans. You know, we all have something to say. If you and I said the same thing, play the same way, arrange the same way, then one of us would be unnecessary. So we have to take stock that you know your product may not be somebody else's product. So it's cool if somebody doesn't like it. It's cool. Like I'm. I'm secure in my product now, enough so that I can post stuff. And it's cool if people don't dig it. It's cool if people dig it. It's fine because it's a fact of life. Right. That's yeah. just how it is. That's just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we don't have much time, so I want to get around to your your five-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. Samara. 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 Yeah. Um, so what does your, your, your daughter mean to you and the music that you create? Everything that I've done since she was born stems from from that experience you know i remember driving on the highway and uh getting that phone call you know you, your daughter is here and everyone pulling up and every song that i've written every lick every like literally everything i've done since that point has been a a reflection of what i feel towards her you know so even my ep coming up there are a couple songs on it uh one of my songs called home um, it really reflects uh, my passion for her and seeing her expand and grow and become this four-year-old who is now turning 24, you know, because she thinks that she's a, a big woman. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 it's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing to see uh, something that you've created, a human being, and see them just change, you know, every single day and every year. You know, yeah. Something different. And so the music that I write now is a, a reflection of that. How has Samara changed Samara change the way you perceive the world, the way you see the world? Well, I mean, it's about touching situations or, or having situations come up. And when she was one, you know, she couldn't speak clearly, you know. She had to say certain things, and I had to be very patient. I had to find ways of expressing what I needed to express as an adult towards her and vice versa. And being able to do that the same way musically, like finding a concept or a topic that I know in my head, <clears throat> and I'm seeing the picture very, very clearly, but having to be able to translate to everybody else and translate to other people or life situations that may come up. Um, I've learned how to basically scrap all that stuff and no matter what format it is in my mind to be able to break it down because the rule of thumb is break it down so that even a child can understand. So I've had to be, I've, I've had to, to, to been able to um, have things in my mind and interact with this individual who is like 20 something years younger than I am right. and break it down. So in the same way, um, musical ideas or concepts that may be structured in this grand way in my mind, I've had to be able to, to break it down in the same way and um, make sure that it's palatable to my audience. Hmm. Yeah. So that carries over to, to your playing as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your teaching. Oh, yeah. It's changed everything. Everything. Because I, I teach as well, as, as you, you just mentioned, and it's really being able to um, take any concept that is super... Uh, esoteric or way out there, or way left field, and bring it to somebody so that even a five year old or an eight year old can understand. It's like bringing it down to their level and not not condescending, but bringing it in a way that's meaningful and palatable to them. 
Were you there for for the childbirth? No, I wasn't there. I was like I said, I was driving on the highway. Yeah, and you missed call. it. I missed it. Yeah, I Are wish you? I was there though. Yeah, yeah. Were you coming from a gig or were you working or something? Yeah, I was coming from work. Hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, man. Um, is parenting what you expected? <laughs> At all. <laughs> At all. I mean, you have these templates in your mind. It's like it's like going on a gig or going on a gig that's, I want to send it around improvisation. You know, one night you will do it this way and you have an expectation that the next night is going to be like that and it may be totally different. You have these concepts about parenting, you have these concepts about human beings, and then it's like, okay, what do I do now? And you have to, like, think on your feet. But there are things that you have to default to, um, things that have helped me over the years, you know, yeah. the way that I've been brought up by my parents and even my friends around me. Um, that helps a lot. But it's it's nothing nothing that you you could you could be really prepare for it's always in your moment it's always spontaneous especially the fact that she lives thousands of miles away back in trinidad back in trinidad and i have to parent from a distance it's really a, a really interesting dynamic um i have to really thank her mom for it too you know we have a a really good relationship um that allows for for this to happen so it's interesting right yeah no it's great talking to you hey great to be here man yeah thanks for being here